Hi, I'm James, professional photographer, journalist, and educator. Welcome to this video for tipsquirrel.com, where I'm going to show you how to create a wet plate collodion effect in Photoshop. So to get started, we just need to make a copy of the background layer. So that's already selected, and I'm gonna hold down Control and J, and there we have our new layer. And now we're gonna add some sharpening using the high pass filter. So go to Filter, Other, and High Pass. And then just make sure that a radius of 10 is input there if you're going for a really tight portrait like mine. If you're going for a waist level portrait, then a radius of 5 is going to be absolutely perfect. So the reason that we're adding high pass sharpening is just to mimic the really nice sharp effect that you get with a genuine wet plate collodion. And now let's just change the blending mode of this layer from normal to overlay. And there we get the transparency back. So now what I'm going to do is hold down Control, Alt, Shift, and E. And I've just created that layer because I'm doing everything non-destructively. So all the effects are applied to individual layers. And for this one, we're going to add the blur, which is going to mimic the really shallow depth of field effect that you get. So go up to Filter, Blur, and then Lens Blur. And with this, just leave all the default settings in place, it's fine. Just make sure that radius is set to 60 and then hit OK. We're gonna add a touch more blur. So go up to filter, blur, and then motion blur and set the angle to 10 and the distance to 50. And that's just gonna give us a kind of shaky look to the blur as well. And it, for me, it just creates a slightly more authentic look. So just hit OK once you're ready there. And now we need to actually reveal some of the sharpness. So go down to the layer mask icon at the bottom of the layers palette, which is a rectangle with a circle in the center. Then press B on the keyboard to activate the brush tool. So just to make sure that the foreground and background colors down here are set to black and white, hit D on the keyboard. Then if white's in the foreground, just hit X and bring black into the foreground. So now I'm just gonna hold down the shift key and press the left square bracket key a few times to make sure the brush has a really nice soft edge. Then just by pressing the right square bracket key on its own, I'm gonna make the brush much larger. So now I'm going to carefully paint in the areas that I would like to be sharp. So I'm just gonna use a slightly smaller brush down here towards the chin. So what I'm trying to achieve here is a certain amount of fall off along the face. So I'm just gonna hit X to bring white into the foreground. So that's going to hide that sharpness effect again. And I'm just going to apply it to the edges of the cheeks here, just because they're further back from the plane of focus. So there we go. I think that's looking quite good. So now it's time to add the black and white effect. And this is where everything really starts to happen. So let's go down to the adjustment layer icon which is a half white half black circle at the bottom of the layers panel and then choose channel mixer so i'll just bring that over and just make sure that the monochrome box is checked so to get started just type in minus 100 for the red channel zero for green and 200 for blues and this gives us that kind of strange wet plate look and it's all down to the way that the chemicals would have actually reacted to light. They were much more sensitive to blue. So now what we do is just drag the red slider over to the right until the image looks as bright as you want it to be. So we're kind of getting there. So I think somewhere around there. If you're getting burnt out highlights, what you can do is just then drag the green slider down a touch. And there you'll see we've revealed all of that detail again. So once that's done, just click on the X to close down the dialog window. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is just lighten the image a tiny bit and then dull it down and knock out some of the contrast. So I'm just gonna go down to the adjustment layer icon again and choose curves. And then just by left mouse clicking in the center of that line and then dragging up and to the left slightly, that's just lightening things off. And then I'll close that window down and create a levels adjustment layer and what I'm going to do now is take the white point down and this is knocking contrast out of the kind of brighter parts of the image. And then if I just drag the black output and I'm going to take that to about 10. So we've set output levels black to 10 and white to 20. And if I just show and hide that, you'll see it just gives that slightly more 
authentic kind of vintage look that you would get with a wet plate collodion. Okay, so now what we're going to do is add a texture to mimic the kind of smudged emulsion or chemical effect that you would get with a wet plate. So I've got a texture open here, it's already black and white, so I'm just gonna hold down Control and A to select all, Control and C to copy, and then click back onto my portrait and hold down Control and V to paste. So what I'm gonna do now is just change the blending mode from normal to multiply, and then I'm gonna hold down Control and J to make a copy, and then Control and I to invert that layer, and this time I'm gonna change the blending mode to screen. So just with that top texture layer active, I'm gonna hold down the Shift key and left mouse click on the other texture layer, and then hold down Control and G to group those together. And now what I'm gonna do is just drop the opacity down somewhere to between 10 and 15%. So I think I'm gonna go for 15 there. And you'll just see there's a very light kind of mottled effect which mimics the chemicals. So, so things are looking really good now, but we just have a couple more things to do just to make it a bit more authentic. So that texture step is one that you can leave out if you would like just to have a really nice clean image. But if you wanna go for something a bit more realistic, then put your texture in and you can experiment with different textures to see what works best. So we're just going to add a sepia effect now, so go to the adjustment layer icon again, and select photo filter, and then with the drop down menu, simply go to sepia, and then set an amount of somewhere between 25 and 50. It really depends on how strong you would like it to be. I'm gonna take mine down, let's go for, I'm gonna go for about 30. So once that's done, click on the cross, and there we have it. That is our wet plate collodion effect. Now what you could do is either save the image with all the layers intact so that you can adjust them later on, or you could go to this menu at the top right of the layers panel, and it's just popped up outside of the screen. But when you scroll down, you'll see flatten image, and that just flattens that down into the background image, and you can save it as a JPEG. So that is how to create a wet plate collodion effect in Photoshop.